Are we on? Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So on today's video, I'm finally gonna share with you guys my new Bambino Plus. I had to go look back into the videos because I didn't know if I shared it with you guys yet. I know I did an unboxing on Instagram, so if you do follow me there, you've already seen the unboxing. I've been using it for some time. So today is gonna be more like showing you what it is about, my thoughts on it so far. I've had it for about a month now, I think. And I have some thoughts, some things that you guys should know before you consider it, because I do know that a few of you guys have messaged me and asked me, is it worth the price? Should I buy it? What do you think? Should I just keep my espresso? So I'm gonna answer pretty much kind of like all those questions and doubts and then show you how the machine works. So let's get started with this video. Okay, so this is the machine right here. And again, if you guys missed the unboxing, I'll put the reel that I did on the left side of the screen so you guys can see the unboxing on the quicks. If not, make sure to follow me on Instagram so you guys can see the unboxing right there. It has a single shot, a double shot button, a steam purge. So this is, you could use it to purge the machine, but it does it automatically, which I love. And then this is also to start the milk. And then these two buttons right here will help you determine the temperature of the milk that you want and then the frothiness of the milk. It does come with a frothing pitcher for you to use to froth your milk. Overall, it's a pretty nice machine. Very stunning looking, especially in this color, in my opinion. So that's how the machine looks like. I'm looking up the price. I got mine from breville.com because they had the white color through Breville. The price is $4.99, which if you think about the Cortista Plus, the Cortista is $600. So it is cheaper with Breville. And if you think about it, if you're gonna be using coffee beans instead of pods in the long run, it's a lot cheaper. But I should say it's not as easy, it's not as convenient as the Nespresso world. With Nespresso, you just pop in a pod or a capsule, whatever you want to call it, and you're good to go. With a manual side of coffee, it's a lot more finicky, a lot more variables, and with mom life, it's not, it hasn't been easy. I'm not gonna lie, it hasn't been an easy machine. I do want to try it sometimes, but it's a lot, a lot of stuff that goes into this machine. I'm trying at the same time not to be, not to be too picky, I don't want to become this like coffee snob that's like, oh, I taste it's burnt or I under extracted. But sometimes you can't help but to actually taste that under extraction or over extraction. And that's why if you don't have the time to learn this whole thing and this whole realm of like coffee stuff, maybe this machine is not for you. And again, I consider returning it because of that, because it's a lot of stuff. So. I want to say that I've dialed it in. I haven't yet. So I'm going to try to dial it in with you guys and show you guys the process of what I've been doing. And you need a grinder to get the best shot out of this machine. It doesn't have a grinder to begin with. So I already had a grinder. I had a grinder when I got the Chemex and it so happened to be the Breville Pro is what I have. But we're gonna dial it in. We're gonna see how this goes. And then I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna show you guys all the, the uh, tools that I bought because it does come with a portafilter, which is this one right here, it comes with it. It's quite heavy, but it is plastic on the handle. And usually this portafilter, they call it like a training wheels kind of portafilter because it has a double wall. I believe that's what it's called. It helps you get the most out of your espresso shot even if you don't grind it that well, even if you don't have the right amount of dose, the way that it's made, it's gonna help you out to get the best shot. So that's what it comes with, but I really wanna use what I bought from Crema. This is a portafilter by Crema Coffee Products. They make accessories for all Breville machines, and this is one of them. And so this one, if you notice, it doesn't have a bottom to it, like this one does. They're bottomless. So this is like a bottomless portafilter. And so this one allows you to actually like determine if your dose is right, if your tamping is right. That's why I chose to buy it. Um, and it's also pretty, it's a wooden handle and it makes the machine just look a lot more luxe with a wooden handle. Doesn't really matter, but you know, you guys know what I'm about aesthetic. I do have two funnels that I bought separately when you're getting coffee out of the grinder. Sometimes the coffee grinds tend to like splatter in different areas and these just control as they're coming out. It controls the amount of 
splatter so it helps to keep the area a little bit cleaner and you guys will see how i use these i'm out of breath i don't know if you guys saw my announcement but i am four months pregnant so now when i talk i feel like i'm running a marathon also from crema coffee products is this tamper bambino does come with this tamper right here i heard it's great i just wanted something heavier and this one is not as heavy I mean, just holding them, you can really feel the difference. And this one just allows you to get a better tamp. I've seen a lot of like coffee connoisseurs use this one and I'm glad I bought it because I really do like it. It's like a dual side. This side will flatten your coffee puck as you um, prepare the coffee. And then the other side, the flat one, will help you tamp it. So it's a tamper. I also bought this little knock box. So what a knock box is, usually with an espresso, we end up, you know, recycling our pots. So we throw them in the recycling bag. With machines like this, you need a knock box or you end up throwing your pucks, unused coffee grounds into the garbage. So with this, if you're doing a lot of shots, and especially those days that I've just like been trying to dial in my stuff, I end up, you know, throwing all the pucks in here and it's cute i like it i like the gold it's a ceramic it's from an etsy seller if i can find her um store i'll link it for you guys because i did look up other knock boxes and i feel like a lot of them are just very plain jane looking so this one is definitely right up my alley and then i just bought a tamping mat that avoids you damaging your your counter because when you're tamping you're literally pressing against the counter for pressure to apply your pressure to the puck so that one really protects your counter and i think that is it i do use a scale because that's how you're going to dial in you just can't get around it without a scale so yeah again you don't need all of these things but just these extra tools are going to let you use your machine to the fullest to get the best espresso shot so the beans right now that i have in my grinder are from berry house this is not sponsored but they did send me like some beans that i wanted to try out this one is a french van vanilla bean and it is quite tasty i've used it in my chemex and i've used it as espresso shots and it's really really good let's pull a shot and see what happens i follow bruce street i think it is i forgot her name on instagram and she has a video on how to dial in your breville machine she has i think the breville express i think it's called and so she likes to do a 19 gram dose of coffee and then the goal is for your machine to spew out double that amount in espresso within 25 seconds hopefully that makes sense this is why i think it's essential to have a scale because you'll need to measure out 19 grams doubling that in espresso you would want 38 grams out of your machine within she's at 25 seconds but even if it's like 30 seconds, I think it's great. 25 to 30 seconds. Anything more than that, then, you know, it's too, it's taking too long. So that's what I've been trying. And if I get it today, then I won't have to redial in my espresso machine at all. It'll just be the grinder. I feel like I'm confusing you guys, but just bear with me. This is all the information you guys need to get a good shot. So let's dial it in and i don't know if we're gonna do a lot of like milk frothing stuff today maybe just for the actual drink i'll show you guys but it's mainly me gonna be dialing in this machine for you guys to see and how it's like working so far so let's do that so with this shot i started my breville grinder at a grind size of 10 and i believe the ground time was like at 22 or 23 but i always make sure that i have about 19 grams of coffee beans here it's like 19.3 so give or take but i didn't really take anything out of it just because it's i don't want to be too picky i'm using this i think they call it wdt tool just to break apart all those coffee grinds to make sure that there's no like balling or i don't know what the proper term is i'm just kind of tamping it a little bit with my fingers before i go in with my tamping tool to level out the coffee and then using the other flatter side just to press it down and really make sure that you're getting a good tamp
All right, so I pulled a shot. Like I said, I didn't do like a programming right now. I just wanted to see what I'm starting with because I can't remember where my machine is at. And right now it took 34 seconds to get 33 grams of coffee, which that means it was doing it too slow because we, we need to be at 38 grams within 25 seconds. So since that grind was at 10, I wanna make it a little bit more coarser so that it can go through the machine a little faster. Does that make sense? Hopefully it makes sense. So the coarser your grounds, the faster it's gonna go through through your pore filter and the finer your grounds, the slower it's gonna go through your pore filter. Right now I need it to speed up a tiny bit so that it goes within the time frame that we're, we're trying to get. And so right now I'm gonna play with my grinder just to make it a little coarser. It was at 10, I made it at 12. So that's gonna make it a little more coarser. And let's try this again. But I wanted to show you, you know, to the naked eye, this might, somebody might say that this is perfect. I smell the vanilla. And honestly, you're gonna have to try the espresso itself because even if the math doesn't add up, sometimes we just gotta taste it. And if it's good to you, then it's good. But I do wanna get it within that time frame, And then after that, I'm probably not gonna be so picky. So let me just taste it. that is that is a little sour so that's where you start noticing like oh the thing is that once you add milk sometimes it mellows it out but i want to i want the espresso to begin with to be good so let's try another another round let me show you this one doesn't look too soupy but i don't know if you guys can tell um that's how the coffee looks like you can kind of see it's not as flat so i think the water was really struggling to go through all that like coffee grounds. So you could see all the little, I think they call it channeling through the puck. All right, so that was me knocking out the espresso puck out of the portafilter. And usually when it's a good puck, it will be more solid and more easier to grab. This one just crumbled up and just pretty much destroyed itself. So, that tells me something. I'm just cleaning up my porta filter just to reuse it again. So let's do this again. So what you're gonna do to actually reprogram your coffee machine, you're gonna press these two buttons and then once they stop blinking, then you're ready to go. Now we made our grinder a little coarser. Let's go from there. I'm not gonna show you everything, but just know that it's gonna be a coarser grind. The next clip will be just us pulling the shot again. I think this was at like 40-ish grams in 25 seconds, which I think is almost perfect. So I just gave it a little mix. This is how it looks. It actually does look like a better shot. The crema is a lot thicker. It looks better. It smells less burnt. So hopefully it's not as bitter. Let's taste it. Wow. Yes. I guess... I actually don't even think I have to play with it anymore. This is better. You guys saw my reaction for the first one. This is a lot smoother. It's really good. Okay. Did this just happen on camera? Because I don't know. And again, 25 seconds. And I think it was like, I'm going to have to look at the footage. It was like 40 grams that it was at within 25 seconds. I can't remember, I'm gonna have to look at the footage. But the way I was looking at it, right when I stopped it, I think it was perfect. And it tastes really, really good. So here's the thing, with every coffee bean that you buy, you're gonna have to redial in your coffee grinder. Not your machine, your coffee grinder. That just goes with any like coffee machine that you get. And this is me again, I'm trying to not be as picky, but honestly with the prepping and the puck, and the tamping and all of that, it really makes a difference. I really tasted a difference with the first shot and then this shot. And again, since it's not even like perfect to the to the math that I'm saying, um, even then, I think this is good for me. I'm gonna fill this up with whole milk to like this minimum part, and then we're gonna froth and I'll show you guys how it looks. I have achieved some latte art with this. The reason why I love this machine is that you can froth the milk manually like yourself and like actually you know to do all that twirling and stuff 
Or if you just want the machine to take over, you can just fill this and then lock it in place, press the button, and the machine will do it for you. And till this day, I haven't really been into like doing it myself. So the fact that it does it for me is amazing. Okay, so to that bottom line. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of creme caramel on my cup. We'll throw this shot in. I like the first temp right here, the bottom one, and then the first one down here. If you want something frothier for like a cappuccino, then you can go up higher, but that's what I like it at. Sadly, I didn't get any latte art. Sometimes I get lucky, sometimes I don't. I still, I know some of you guys have asked me to do a video and I'm no pro yet. Sometimes I get lucky, sometimes I don't. But the most important part is how the coffee tastes. Wow. This is, this is amazing. This is really good, oh my God. So I programmed it. So now the next shot, it'll probably be the same. I have to make sure that I tamp it correctly, I'll do all the work to get the same shot, but the machine will always run that same amount of water through the machine for the next shot. And it should taste the same as long as the course is the same, the, the dose is the same, the tamping is the same, then it should be good. So you guys saw how much is involved in this process and maybe now you understand why I'm like finicky about it. Honestly, I've seen videos where people use the porta filter that it comes with. I know that I'm overcomplicating myself, but if I'm gonna jump into the manual side of espresso, I wanna do it that way. You get more control, and once you get the hang of it with everything, once you get the hang of it, then it becomes second nature and you start noticing little things. So I just wanted to do it this way. But if you want the machine and you wanna use the training wheels kind of porta filter, I've heard good things about it. I've seen people get really good espresso with it. And with that one, you don't really need to worry too much about the uh, grind and the, the dose even. So just keep that in mind. But this is the way I'm doing it. And again, do what works best for you and your coffee preference. And yeah, hopefully this video helped you guys out into deciding whether you want it or not. And if I'm a newbie and I'm looking at this video, I can already tell that I'm going to deter you from it. <laughs> but I am excited and I'm happy that... I finally got a good shot and I'm gonna leave my machine programmed that way. And now I just have to control my grind. Like I said, with every new coffee bean, every coffee bean is different, every roast is different. So you're gonna have to kind of play around with it a little bit. But as long as I have that vanilla berry house uh, whole bean in there, it should be pretty consistent going forward until I finish the bag. So cheers to a manual espresso shot. It is really good, it's so yummy. If you guys have any questions, any concerns, if you guys think I'm crazy, <laughs> um, just say it nicely. Put it in the comment sections below. I will be happy to help you guys. And if you guys just got this machine, we're all learning. I'm no James Hoffman, but I am eager to learn. So yeah, be nice in the comment section. I know coffee tends to be a very controversial, I know more than you do kind of industry and i'm not here for that so just be kind and if you're not i will block you so yeah that is it for today's video thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye